I'm Terry Kevlin. I've been working at Bates for about the last seven years, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about canning. And because we are limited in our time to only 15 minutes, I'm not going to be able to go over everything. What we're going to do is a light instructional and heavy intimidation reduction session on high acid or low pH foods that are only going to require a hot water bath in order to preserve them. So when we talk about hot water and high acid and all those things, we're talking about things that are um, apples and blackberries and cranberries and citrus and peaches and pears, uh, sauerkraut, tomatoes, all your pickles, all those things that are going to have that acidity level of 4.6 or less so that you do not have to worry about the bacteria that can cause botulism that requires a pressure canner. I like hot water bath because the equipment is so much more simple and it's things that do not take a great deal of time or money for you to be able to equip yourself completely. In fact, the biggest thing that you're going to have to get is a large pot, whether it's a stock pot or a canning pot. It's got to be a pot with a lid and a pot that is big enough to manage the largest jar you may have and still allow two to one to two inches above that. So when the water boils, it's not going to boil out all over everything else. Also, you're going to need a wide mouth funnel to make sure that you get your goodies in the jar and not on your counter. You're going to need a way to pick your pot up both from inside the pot and to put it into the pot as you're maneuvering your jars back and forth. You need something that's going to allow you to measure the headspace. All the different products that you're going to be putting up are going to have a different headspace. This cool little tool allows you to measure that, as well as turning it over and using it to eliminate the bubbles that you might have gotten in while you're packing your produce in your jars. You also need jars, and you need a variety of jars because the different jars are going to suit different purposes. Wide mouth jars are best used for things that are large, like okra or other things like squash that are going to come out more easily once you've opened them with the wide mouth jar. Regular pint sized jars are great for sauces, salsas, things like that. Jellies are going to go into smaller jars. In fact, when I'm saying smaller jars, I mean from a half pint to a quarter pint. This is perfect for gifts at the holidays. As well as quart jars that you're going to be using for juices and sauces, such as spaghetti sauce and things. And you're going to want to make sure that you are matching your packing with the right size jar. If you're a family of four, a quart jars may be perfect for spaghetti sauce. You don't want to open up that large of a jar if you're only a family of two. So a regular pint jar might do better. As well as something to keep your jars off the bottom of your pot so it allows the hot water to circulate all the way around your pot. Since you're going to have to treat the lids, and this is a two-part lid, so this is a lid, this is a ring, you need to heat your lids so that the rubber seal gets a little bit soft and makes a better seal on your jar. You don't want to lift, you don't want to be going into a hot pot of lids with your fingers, so a little magnetic tool makes it a whole lot easier to manage that. When you start looking at your jars, a couple of things. One, if you've tried to jar or can this year, you've noticed that Everybody is not only making uh, sourdough bread, but they're also canning. And canning supplies are very difficult to find with this time of year. So either getting late sales after the canning season is over or early sales before everybody else is thinking about it is the best time to buy your supplies. Make sure you only use jars that are tempered glass. Please resist using Aunt Effie's uh, old glass mayonnaise jars even for hot water baths, they're just not safe. So tempered jars, and you can tell those because those are manufactured specifically for home canning. 
only can the family favorites. It does you no good to put up a year's worth of green beans if no one in the family but you likes green beans. So make sure you are putting something up that everybody's going to want to eat all year long. Make sure you have all of your ingredients before you get started. There's nothing like getting halfway through and realizing you don't have any mustard seeds to put into your jars of pickles and you've got to stop the process. Also make sure that you have adequate time. Peeling 20 pounds of tomatoes late at night and then realize you don't have time because it has gotten so late to complete the process. Putting those tomatoes into the refrigerator until the next day is going to present a problem both because you're going to deteriorate some of your flavors. You're also now going to be putting cold tomatoes in hot jars and then into a hot liquid. For basic science people, that means you could easily break your jar. Preserving canning does not improve the flavor. That means you use you are best suited to use freshly harvested produce for putting in your canning. Make sure when you start putting in things like your tomatoes that you've got them cut uniformly so that they cook evenly as you go through your process. When you start your process, you're also going to want to make sure that you wash your jars with warm soapy water and that you're inspecting your jars more with your fingers than your eyes to make sure there aren't any chips, there aren't any cracks before you get started because you're going to wash those with hot water. I use the dishwasher, in fact, many people do, but once they've been washed, I fill mine maybe a halfway full of water and put them in the microwave and keep nuking them to keep that water hot because you need them hot before you put them in that boiling water that you're going to be canning them in. In fact, your lids, like I said, just the lid, just the lid, not the ring, needs to go into a small pot with hot water so that that ring is soft, makes a good seal. Do not boil them because boiling can warp the lid and create problems for getting a good seal. So you're going to fill your stock pot up halfway full of water so that as you set your jars down in there, you're going to start filling that pot even more. I always keep a kettle, hot water kettle, piping hot so that if I need to top it off to get it to cover the, the lids of the jars, that I've got it right there. I don't have to heat water up. You can either hot pack, which means you've had to cook your things, such as salsas, sauces, jellies, those sorts of things, or you can raw pack. And that's gonna be your dilly beans, your green beans that you're going to make into pickles because you're gonna pack those in just as tight as you can and then put a hot brine on top of them. Tomatoes are the same way. Those you can pack either in water or in their own juice. Fill one at a time. The only thing you want in that jar is what you're intending on putting in that jar. You don't want a gnat from flying around. You don't want extra dust. You don't want yeast, mold, things that are going to potentially set up problems for your canning. So you're going to fill it up. You're going to check your headspace to make sure that you've got that half inch space that you're looking for. You're going to slip this down in a wooden spoon handle is fine. Do not use metallic things like knives because those can chip your glass more easily than you might like. So make sure you've got all the bubbles worked out. You're going to wipe your rim to make sure that you don't have any seeds or solutions on there. Place your lid, pick your lid up, set it on top. Then you're gonna put your ring on and you're only gonna finger tighten is the most frequently used term. Don't torque it down, just make it so it finger tightens and makes that seal. Then, because your water's already hot, you're gonna use your lifters to set those down in there. Make sure you've got them as tight as you can in there because as it starts bubbling and boiling, you don't want the jars to rattle around against each other. The longer the, I'm sorry, 
the larger the jar, the longer it takes to cook. And you do not start your checking your time until after you've got it to a rolling boil. And so you get it on there, you've got them all loaded, you've got your lid on so you can keep that rolling boil going. As soon as you get that, that's when you start your timer. Once your timer has gone off, you're going to turn off your heat, remove your lid, and leave those in there for about five minutes. So if anything untoward is going to happen, it's going to happen in the pot and now not out on your counter. You're then going to remove your jars and you're going to set them on a 100% cotton towel or a wooden cutting board, not on a cold countertop. Imagine cold countertop, boiling hot glass container, not gonna work very well. Also, if you put it on polyester, if you're not sure, check beforehand polyester and it will all become one together with polyester with rings all over your polyester towel. You're going to leave those jars out there to cool for 12 to 24 hours. That's going to give you an opportunity <clears throat> to turn around to your sink, wash up all the gear that you've been using. There's nothing quite as satisfying as hearing that little ping that goes on with those when those lids suck all the way down and make a good seal. If something does not seal within that 12 to 24 hour, you can reprocess the food. Recommendation is that you put it in a new jar because you need to figure out why that first jar did not seal down. It could be that you use something when it was in there, it chipped, cracked, something didn't happen right. And if you inspect the jar afterwards and you find there is a chip, assume that it was during the process and that you need to discard both the jar and the food that's inside of it because you don't want to get a hold of a piece of glass, needless to say. You're also going to take that ring off. You don't have to store them with the rings. In fact, it's better if you don't because you can oftentimes, there's just enough uh, stuff around here that you can rust your rings. So store them without the rings, but you're going to turn it over and make sure that it doesn't seep. You're going to test the top of that lid and make sure that it is concave and not convex, which is going to tell you that you've got a good seal on it. Next is labeling. Because you need to label it with what, when, and where you got that recipe. Otherwise, you can't repeat your successes and you can't avoid your wish you hadn't done that that way. So what you've got in there, unless it's obviously tomatoes, when you did it so that you can make sure that you've got a FIFO or a first in, first out system with your produce, most things you want to keep for only a year because it starts degrading in the quality. So you can see a difference in flavor and color and texture, even in nutritional value that's going on. So if you've got something that's in the back of the cabinet, it's from 2015, you need to move it to the front and eat that before you start eating your 2020 produce. There is an amazing variety of things that you can pickle. And that is just about that easy. Hopefully this has taken a little of the scare factor out of it because some of the scare factor comes with horror stories of grandma and her pressure cooker and not doing it correctly. This is a little more difficult to not do it correctly. But some of my favorites are pickled uh, zucchini and squash. It's a bread and butter pickle recipe. I love lemon basil jelly. It's even better if you put some jalapenos in there and make it a hot Basil there, basil gel. So there are all sorts of things that you can do, whether it is with fruit, with herbs, with produce, that you just need to take some time and look into some of your resources on what good recipes are. All recipes has good recipes, food network, there are all sorts of places. And for general information, you can look on the USDA's uh, website. There's a Food Preservation Society's website. Fall Canning always has information out there. In fact, they're sort of the Bible 
there's a blue book. The ball blue book is something that old fashioned folk like me always refer to. McKay's is a great place to go and get old recipes that are tried and true. That's where I got almost all of my canning books myself. Canning supplies, like I said, have been difficult to get this year. Don't worry, there are still some out there and there are some that will be coming a little bit later on. I'm just, I'm a believer that even in an emergency, like a power outage, I know I can go to my cupboard and get my canned goods out rather than worrying about whether my freezer and all of my produce that's in the freezer is going to stay good as long as the power is out. Best way to store it is in between 50 and 70 degrees. So if you've got cabinets, most of the time that will meet your need. Down in the basement, as long as it's a dry location as well, is also good. Can't think of anything else that is really pertinent to pickling and doing jellies that also take a hot bath. So if you've got any questions, I'll be glad to entertain them. Um, we got a question from Linda Ryan before the program started. Okay, um, Linda? <laughs> her daughter asked her to can a tomato sauce recipe. How does she know that the recipe is suitable for canning? Uh, most tomatoes are considered uh, high acid enough that it's all right. I can tell you that the reason I've got my little lemon juice thing out here is that I always add a half a teaspoon of lemon juice either to the bottom or the top of any tomato recipe or any tomatoes just fresh packed. So they should have enough of a low acid to be able to take it. It also is a good idea. Don't use just regular table salt, everybody. There's a reason why. And it's because it has an anti-caking agent in it that is going to change the color in your liquids later on. Only use canning salts because it does not have that caking agent in it. The biggest problem, uh, Linda, is going to be your processing time. What I would say is take a look under other recipes that you can find online and take a look for their uh, boiling time. It could be between 30 and 40 minutes. Okay, we're getting in a couple of questions if you want to take a look. Okay. Ah, pickling mix in the box. The box, this is canning, so I talked about that. What's over here is the pectin. There is both a liquid pectin and a dry pectin for, and that's the stuff that makes jelly into jelly. Some fruits already have enough pectin in it that you do not have to add any in order to make it gel, but it will say on the recipe itself, if you need to use a liquid or a dry pectin. So that's what the box is, is canning salt in particular. How do you know if a canned item is bad? Well, if you've lost the seal on your jar, if the little, if it now does, if it moves up and down, I brought this one particularly because it's a jelly and I didn't have to worry about it killing me if it was bad, is that if you've lost the seal, then assume that if you don't know when you did lose the seal, assume it's bad. It just don't take the chance in eating it. As long as that seal is good, like I said, even if it's lost its color, then it should be good. You can always taste just a little bit of it, but the vinegar and pickles is going to keep those yeasts and molds at bay for longer than the one year that I recommend you keep it on storage. Hopefully I've answered, or at least I have demystified hot water canning a little bit for everybody. Like I said, a, a large pot, and a couple of very basic tools just to make it easier on you. You don't have to have a wide mouth jar if you can, a wide mouth funnel, if you can make one on your own, it just makes life easier and the mess a lot less. And the other little pickup tools are to keep you from getting burned. I can tell you, do not try to use regular tongs to pick up 
a hot jar of pickles, you're going to end up dropping them on the floor or the countertop, and it's not worth the mess, and it's not worth the chance that you're going to have boiling water splash out on top. So, I have no, ah, on the salt, tongs, totally worth it. Glad, ah, oh, peg, glad to hear that that was helpful. So if there's not any other questions, did I fly through that? Oh my God, I did. Hopefully I didn't go through so fast that you guys couldn't keep up. If you have any questions, please uh, email. I'm assuming that we can handle it and this should go easily onto the website so you can go back and reference it later on. All right, thank you so much.